hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Got a little more complicated camera setup. Got a close-up cam here this time. Um, uses for old phones. <laughs> Tonight, today, this time, um, I have the promised Bail Breaker Dormancy. Uh, you can see my original Bail Breaker Dormancy video. I'm going to pretend I can put it over there. It might be there. Uh, if not, it'll be linked somewhere. And in that, I mentioned that... <laughs> I was out of my mind that night. I don't know. Um, I mentioned the uh, Bail Breaker Brewing is doing wine bottle aging versions of their their uh, uh, some of their beers. And I mentioned that there was a dormancy wine bottle. Well, it's not wine bottle. It is dormancy breakfast stout with aged in Jameson whiskey barrels. So, there on the close-up camera, if it works, you're seeing it. Dormancy breakfast stout aged six months in Jameson whiskey barrels. This is an 8.3 alcohol by volume. The original can is 6.8%, so it went up a good amount in those six months in the uh, Jameson barrels. Uh, if you want to check the full review on the original Jameson, obviously check the original review in which I babble on and on as I want to do. I enjoyed it quite a lot. It was on the dry side uh, when it was colder, and as it warmed up, it developed some very interesting berry notes uh, to complement the chocolate and, and other things. This review is mostly going to be about the barrel-aged Jameson, but I also have ice cream. <laughs> so, uh, I might have over-melted it. We'll see. Um, we are going to make some floats out of these, and we shall see how they work. Anyways, let's uh, get into it, shall we? Since I've already talked about, you know, what a, a, a breakfast stout is, I will not get into any of that. Um, suffice to say, it is an oatmeal stout with coffee. And then to this, to the, 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 the Jameson barrel version, they simply aged it longer in a special vat in a Jameson whiskey barrel. Jameson is a, if you don't know, you should know, um, it is a... An Irish whiskey, a very common Irish whiskey, one of the more popular Irish or easy to find uh, mass market Irish whiskeys out there. It's a delicious whiskey. Uh, mass market, who cares? They did a good job with it. It's smooth, it's sweet, it's accessible. If you're trying to get into whiskeys, it's a great way. There are other Irish whiskeys out there, Irish whiskeys out there that are delicious. Jameson's just a particularly good one. Um, but let's see what it adds. I suppose I should open the can do for comparison. These have been out for three hours, four hours, probably three hours from the fridge. So they're not room temperature, but they're definitely 50, maybe 60 degrees. Okay, so first the can into my three magnets glass. And next, the bottle into my dragon head cider glass. Okay, right off the bat, there is very much less head on the whiskey barrel version. But let's remind myself here. Okay, so yes, dry, dark chocolate, um, maybe stale coffee and definitely uh, an oat note to it. Let's clear the nose. Ooh, oh, um, right away I'm picking up more of those berry notes that weren't in the nose at all in the, in the, uh, the can. This smells of dark cherries, like dry cherries right off the bat. There's still the, the, the coffee notes in the background, 
and the dry dark chocolate, but they are much subtler, much more muted. The first thing that hits is a really delicious dark cherry. I could pretend I'm smelling something else, but it would be pretending, so I'm not sure. Maybe a creaminess? Yeah, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's dark cherry and, and just really kind of a muted um, uh, uh, chocolate, and the coffee is really, really, really subtle in the background. There, oh, okay. Yeah, stick your nose real far in there and you're gonna pick up just the slightest hints of the whiskey. And kind of a, an alcohol burn. It's, it's not like you're smelling the alcohol burn, but you're smelling the memory of it. Oh, get that on my beard. Sorry, mustache. It's on my face, I should know what it's called. Mustache. Sniffed too deeply. Okay, let's remember the flavor. So, being as this has been warmed up a bit, it's going to be more like the latter part, uh, the, the latter notes that I picked up, or the, the notes that I picked up later in the, the previous review video. So, I'm expecting, yes, to get the chocolate and the coffee. I think I pointed it out as a, um, as like a medium roast uh, French press. And then I'm also expecting to pick up uh, the cherries and possibly the raspberries. And yeah, that's all there. I'm expecting this to do particularly well with the ice cream. We'll see. Um, definitely kind of the dry, uh, dry chocolate and coffee bitterness as kind of the first thing and the last thing. And then this nice uh, berry, uh, you know, cherry and and raspberry middle note and, and kind of bright harmony going on there. Rinse my mouth a little bit here. And let's go in for the uh, whiskey barrel aged. Hmm. Much, much sweeter overall throughout the entire, um, the entire experience. The chocolate is still dark chocolate, but it's a far smoother dark chocolate. The coffee is more there as a, a spice in the background. It's not as, as, as um, dominant uh, throughout. The alcohol is very nicely masked. It's not really uh, present. Well, it's not that it's not present. It's not a dominant aspect of the flavor at all. Um, I would expect this could probably sneak up on you at 8%. I mean, that's not enough to, to be a true, you know, kick in the pants, but it's a stiff one, that's for sure. Even almost some like strawberries and cream. Definitely to the berry side of the fruits. So raspberries, cherries, deliciously smooth. Oh my goodness. I mean, this this is a good beer. The, the dormancy in the can is a good beer. Uh, it's, it's really dominant on more of the dry, dark, dry chocolate, you know, baker's chocolate almost. Um, and and coffee with the berries being a kind of a counterpoint off in the distance. That's really nice. It keeps things interesting, keeps things balanced, keeps them from being boring. But in comparison to aging it for six months in a Jameson Irish whiskey barrel, this is smooth. This is not sweet, but it is sweeter. Um, and the, the cherry, the, it kind of flips the script. Instead of the chocolate and the coffee being the dominant character, the berries 
are the dominant character. Instead of the berries being the, the, the distant counterpoint, the chocolate is this kind of underlying, really smooth, almost syrup-like um, smoothness, just super smooth. And then the coffee is just a real distant spice. That's, that's really good. Now, in fairness, in comparison with, a, with another aged um, bourbon barrel whiskey that I tried recently, that I haven't posted the review for yet. It might up, might be up by the time that this is posted, but uh, at a recent visit to Full Sail Brewing down in Hood River, Oregon, um, I had the privilege of having a few sips of their 2011 um, bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout. And that was, that was head and shoulders more, um, just more. It, it was very different. This, it's not that this can't hold a candle to it, but it's it's different and it's a lot subtler. The 11 years <laughs> that that full sale beer has been aging has really developed the whiskey barrel flavors. I don't believe it was stored in whiskey barrels for 11 years. That would be stupid crazy. I believe it was bottled in 2011 after having already been in whiskey barrels and has just sat in bottles in optimal storage temperatures for 11 years. So that gives you time for a lot of flavors to just develop and change over time. That was a much stiffer beer. I believe it was a 10 or 11%. I couldn't tell you for sure right now off the top of my head. Um, but it was very much more, uh, it wasn't, there was molasses involved there and I'll have to, you'll have to see the video to talk, to, to get my actual reaction. I'm going from memory right now mostly. And, but it was uh, a far more dominating set of flavors in that beer. This, this is super comfortable and it's, it's uh, smooth enough and, and uh, balanced enough. I'm not, I'm not gonna say mild, because it's not a mild beer, but it's it's not so overpowering. You could drink this regularly. It's expensive. You don't want to drink it, drink it regularly, but you could because it's that character of beer. Yeah, that's just good stuff. <laughs> um, I really like that. I like that a lot. That's that's a. Uh... I mean, these are all, all the Bale Breaker Brewing um, bottle, big bottle releases are very limited runs. As you can see, there's uh, what 1,200 and something bottles total that will be um, done of this. And this was bottle, yeah, 1,260 bottles total, and this is 1,036. Um, so, you know, it's not like I can grab this and keep it stocked. Um, it would be interesting. <laughs> If I can still find this at Total Wine, I'm looking for a replacement aging beer. And if I were to be able to get four or five bottles, stick them in my cupboard, and then drink one a year, that's a really interesting thing to do. And I think this would, beer would do excellently for that. I think that would be interesting to see um, just how the flavors develop over several years. But let us um, dive in to the ice cream, shall we? I'm looking forward to this quite a lot. Move these off to the side, to the side, and bring good old Tillamook out to play. Yeah, it's not too bad. Tillamook ice cream is a very um, heavy ice cream. They don't whip a lot of air into the mix. Uh, if you know, you know. I'm going to make small servings of each. You can see the vanilla flex in here. Let's see how the ice cream is just by itself. Mm. It's a very nice, dense. Here, you, I'll show you that. There's, there's not a lot of air bubbles whipped into there. Uh, pro tip. Ice cream is generally sold by volume, you know, in the gallon or the quart. You want the ice cream 
that weighs the most for a given volume because that means that the least amount of air has been whipped into that ice cream. That's what you want. Now, my first beer float was a Guinness beer float. And like I've said before, don't knock it till you've tried it. It's really something else. Guinness has a lot of the kind of the dry, chocolatey coffee notes that are um, common or that you would see that I see in the in the, the canned version of this dormancy. Not to the same extent at all. Uh, the Guinness also is nitrogenated in the, the, the can. And that has a significant impact on the character of the beer. The nitrogen kind of insulates your tongue from a lot of the more um, uh, unpleasant flavors. The, the, the real strong flavors. And so it really smooths out the beer substantially, the flavor. This hasn't been nitrogenated. It's going to be more kind of full front. So let's uh, pour this first. <laughs> I always love what that head does on ice cream. Let's put this one up closer and pour that. Yeah. It's just like a just like root beer on ice cream, eh? Um, with a with an ice cream float, the with the Guinness, what I experienced was a a really delicious, um, like the the perfect bite that mixed everything, tasted like the best chocolate you'd ever had. The sweetness and creaminess of the of the ice cream mixed with the beer to to just produce this really wonderful flavor and i'm gonna put more ice cream in here um not that one this one sorry keeping track of spoons i don't want to mix them come on out you go there put it away before i get tempted again Okay, so reminder, the smells in the can are dark chocolate, dry coffee, like baker's chocolate and coffee. The flavor is more the same. You get what you smell, plus a really nice uh, complimentary light berry and cherry fruit notes. Sorry, uh, yeah, this side. The Jameson Whiskey Barrel Aged Dormancy smells, there's almost a, like a fruit molasses smell to it as well. Like really dark cherries. And tastes of really delicious, uh, the dark fruit, the, the cherries, um, maybe even prunes, or not really prunes, dried cherries, uh, berries, with the chocolate being far smoother and the coffee being just a really slight kind of spice off to the side. So with ice cream, the can first, and you want to get everything. Mm. And alive. Okay, it amps the in the in the can, the the coffee and the chocolate are strong enough to present a complementary counterpoint, but the berry notes are are like a syrup. It's a little bit bitter, but with a good ice cream, that's not a bad thing. 
getting just the beer. Yeah. Oh goodness, that's that's good. Okay. Rinse the mouth again. Okay. Now with the barrel aged with the Jameson whiskey barrel aged. You wanted a balanced bite. The booziness, the booziness makes this less successful. The sweetness makes it more interesting. So some positive, some negative. Mm. The, the kind of the molasses character becomes more prominent. But yeah, I can taste the, the, the higher alcohol content now more clearly. Hmm. I think this one is better in the can. Um, this is still good, but it's probably a waste of the beer, to be honest. This beer is far and away just really, really, really delicious. The Jameson Whiskey Barrel Aged Dormancy by Bail Breaker. This is the beer to drink. The can of Dormancy is not a beer to ignore. It is a delicious, tasty, good <laughs> uh, breakfast stout. But they made it better by aging it. If you're gonna make a, if you can go a little crazy and make yourself a an ice cream float with your beer, the can is where it's at though. That extra dry bitterness from the, the like the baker's chocolate and the dry coffee, that's, that's, that's just where it's at. Merged and melted together with a really nice vanilla ice cream. It's good stuff. I'm gonna go in for another bite, because I can. Or two. <laughs> Anyways, all that to say, entirely too long-winded. That's good beer. That's good ice cream. That's a pretty tasty float. <laughs> Anyways, this has been Matthew. I am Matthew. And these have been the Dormancy can and the Dormancy Jameson Whiskey Barrel Aged Breakfast Stout. So, two beers, two different expressions. Very tasty, very delicious. Highly recommend. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.